All right, what's going on everybody? Broken Games HDR here. So the PlayStation 5 reveal event happened last week and we got an insight into the console, the controller and games, both first party and third party, some exclusives, timed exclusives and multi-plats. PlayStation's goal is to get a jump start into the next generation by capitalizing on the same strategies that brought them success and made them the market leader for this generation. They are trying to usher a quick migration of users from the PlayStation 4 to the PS5 by offering exclusive games, many of them being sequels to previously established high quality, critically acclaimed titles. Historically, Sony doesn't have the best titles available at launch, but many gamers still buy the console because they know what will eventually come down the pipeline. It seems now Sony intends to change their track record of lackluster day one titles, or at least improve the launch window titles. Now I'm one of those people who buys a PlayStation console day one, more because I know what will come rather than what's there initially. But because of the PlayStation 5 event, I believe there will be more than enough content, at least at the launch window, to justify an early purchase, even though release dates for most of the titles are not 100% confirmed. The PlayStation 5 releases holiday 2020, and more games may be announced before then, but I'm going to give you my top five most anticipated PlayStation 5 exclusives that have already been announced. Now, I wanted to keep my top five list to games that were 100% exclusives and made by Sony's first party studios. And all of the games on my list are that except number five, because this game just looks too impressive and too good to deny. So number five on my list is Kenna, Bridge of Spirits. Kenna Bridge of Spirits is a story driven action game with this really pretty like visual aesthetic and it combines exploration with fast paced combat. And there's certain aspects of this game that just remind me of other titles such as the original Jack and Daxter, uh, Ori and uh, Legend of Zelda. So there's different aspects that I'm seeing while watching the gameplay and just watching the aesthetic that remind me of those titles, which are obviously uh, amazing titles. So I'm definitely looking forward to this game. This game, as I said, is not a an actual exclusive. It's a timed exclusive. It will also be on PC at launch. This game is made by an indie studio in Los Angeles by the name of Ember Labs and it only has a staff of 14 people. And as far as I know, the only thing they've really worked on prior to this game is a short film about based on the Legend of Zelda Majora's Mask. And they felt like this was their natural next, next step and the game utilizes the Unreal Engine. So they are a seemingly new and unproven studio, but we will see how Kenna Bridge of Spirits turns out when we get to play it. So Kenna Bridge of Spirits is number five on my list. Number four on my list is Demon Souls. Yes, the originally niche title that started a craze and gained a cult following and eventually even became mainstream and influenced a bunch of titles after it, such as Bloodborne, Sekiro, Sultan Sanctuary, and many more. This game literally defined a whole genre and honestly didn't get its roses and appreciation until well into the Dark Souls series. Souls games pretty much became the go-to avenue for gamers who actually want a challenge and those who are not of the faint heart. And this game, this remake, should I say, actually, is being made by Bluepoint Games, who are the masters in the industry when it comes to remakes. So it honestly couldn't be in better hands. And I definitely look forward to playing, replaying this classic in all of its glory. Number three is Ratchet and Clank Rift Apart. So I was never a fan of the classic Ratchet and Clank games. I played them as a child, but they just didn't really connect with me. I didn't really find them fun. It was literally only with the 2016 remake that I tried it out and I thoroughly enjoyed the game and I couldn't wait for a sequel and it was inevitable that Insomniac was gonna make another one, you know, after they rebooted the franchise. 
The 2016 Ratchet and Clank reboot had beautiful Pixar quality graphics and visuals. And now with the Ripped Apart, with the power of the PlayStation 5, they're adding on to that and expanding that with ray tracing and just adding minute fine details. And it's not just the impressive visuals, it's also the game design. With the PlayStation 5, we've been hearing so much about the SSD and Ratchet and Clank is one of those titles that really seems to be taking advantage of it and implementing uh, the use of it directly into the game design um, by making the game uh, with this concept of just jumping from levels to levels that load instantly. So it's really going to be interesting to see how they make it come together because there's only been a few games that have utilized that concept of levels uh, within, within levels or jumping from level to levels instantly. So Ratchet and Clank Rift Apart looks like it's going to be an amazing experience. And I dare to almost use the word innovative, which is not a word I throw around often. I hardly ever use it, but because of the way they're, des they're designing uh, the levels and the, the gameplay, I think it could possibly be something innovative or at least something that we weren't able to do, they weren't able to do before to this magnitude. So I look forward to that. Uh, so it is number three for me. Number four is Spider-Man Miles Morales. So spoiler alert, even though technically the existence of this game itself is a spoiler, I still gotta give a spoiler warning because some people are sensitive about that stuff. So at the end of Spider-Man on the PlayStation 4 in 2018, at the end of the game, it was revealed that Miles Morales gains his spider powers. So we knew this was obviously going to be a setup into a sequel, even though we didn't think it was going to come this soon. And anybody who wa who's watched Into the Spider-Verse or uh, read any of the Miles Morales comics, we knew exactly uh, what was coming. So there was a little bit of controversy when this was announced um, the hours after at the PlayStation event because people didn't know exactly what it was. Was it, is it an expansion? Is it a DLC? Turns out it is a standalone game. It's not a full-fledged game such as uh, versus Spider-Man on the, on the PlayStation 4, but it's a standalone and you could almost call it Spider-Man 1.5 because there will be a Spider-Man 2 which we may, if I had to guess, we get to play both as Peter Parker and Miles Morales in Spider-Man 2. And as we know, or as you should know, Miles Morales has very different powers uh, versus Peter Parker as Spider-Man. So the gameplay will be very dynamic and very different. And this game, to me personally, it doesn't bother me that it's a standalone uh, expansion, I guess you can call it. It's not a full-fledged game because some games I loved are just standalone games uh, expanded from the original title, such as Infamous First Light or, Inf or, or uh, Uncharted Lost Legacy. I actually liked Uncharted Lost Legacy more than Uncharted 4, and I know that's an unpopular opinion, but I just thought the game was overall a better game. So standalone is not a bad, dirty word. I think this game is going to be amazing, and I think they're gonna improve off of everything they established with Spider-Man. I mean, the, the web swinging felt great. Uh, if they can find a way to make that feel even better, I mean, it's probably naturally gonna feel better uh, because of the DualSense controller and the haptic feedback, so that'll be uh, an even better experience just because of the controller. Um, I'm sure they'll find a way to improve the combat. Uh, there were some critiques of the combat, somewhat being a little bit too easy, maybe Spider-Man feeling overpowered, even though you can, maybe you can argue that, I mean, he's Spider-Man, he should be overpowered. Uh, but if he felt sometimes a little bit too strong with the suit and the gadget, so maybe find a better balance of enemies and improve the the boss fights and, and some of the gameplay segments and the side missions. So there's there's a lot they can improve there. Uh, and the visuals definitely seem to be improved, or at least when you look at the comparisons between between Miles Morales in the original in, in Spider-Man from 2018 to now, the visuals definitely look significantly better. So. Number two for me is Spider-Man Miles Morales. My number one should be no surprise to anyone that knows me because this is a game that I declared the best new IP of the current generation, in my personal opinion. It was my game of the year. I absolutely loved everything about it. 
it was beautiful it was fun it was ambitious it had a great story even though you know some of it was told through an audio log which was a huge mistake that all developers need to abandon but i loved everything about this game like i said the story the beautiful visuals uh the the gameplay it's the sequel to horizon zero dawn horizon forbidden west so the biggest downside to this is we didn't get any actual gameplay we got some uh, i guess in-game scenes i guess you could you could say but not any actual gameplay unfortunately but i'm just expecting uh, an improvement in every dimension of what we got before i mean a lot of these games have a a high visual ceiling that they've kind of reached so i don't expect a huge leap but i expect uh, better techniques to be used to create a crispier cleaner image uh, at higher resolutions because yes most of these developers are not prioritizing frame rate they are going to just use that power and those resources to present a cleaner image through different techniques whether it's shadows uh lighting and the rest they're obviously going to introduce even more machines the different types of machines that they had in the original and and the and the uh the dlc were so intriguing and so fun to take down uh i'm sure they're going to expand aloy as a character and explain more about the world's lore and how it came to be and we're just going to learn a lot more about the Horizon universe um, because the first one had definitely had some great writing and some pretty good, good characters. So that is my top five most anticipated uh, PlayStation 5 exclusives. Um, let me know what yours are. Appreciate all of you for watching. Make sure you hit the like button. Make sure you hit the notification bell so you can know anytime I upload a video or anytime I stream. Uh, consider becoming a member by hitting the join button but, and you get custom emotes and chat badges. And lastly, follow me on Twitter. Let me know what you think about the video. I'm out of here. Peace.